agree to some method, so that would help it. It's still not going to resolve. But it's not addressing the problem of uh, adequate. No, that would help, though. I mean, it still doesn't address directly Bob Hunter's comments about geometrics. Even under the best case scenario, he seems to feel that it still would be very tight. I think one of the issues that needs to be addressed is the question of compact parking and, and relative car sizes. And that's really what makes the art of designing or, or the engineering aspects of designing a parking lot a little difficult because different size cars um, have different geometry, both in terms of length and width and turning radii. And normally in some of the municipalities, and particularly in a parking garage where you're dealing with a tight situation, you design to lower standards for compact parking. And the intent on the parking lot was to, on this parking lot design was to recognize that we wanted to save that existing tree. And so we have conformed with the standards as best we can to meet the standards on the site. And I guess with all due respect to Mr. Hunter's comments, uh, I do feel that if we can properly sign those, we can achieve the 12 parking on site. I don't see that as a, as a particular issue. And if it requires placing of a sign at the head of each one or indicating that that one adjacent to the tree has to be a compact only, I think that can be achieved. The your ordinance doesn't recognize the difference between compact and regular size parking. Any other questions or comments? Well, if there aren't, then uh, we must first determine the completeness. Steve, do you have anything to um, to say about the completeness of this? Nothing. Nothing major. Project? I think it's you know for all purposes, it's it's a complete application. Okay. Thank you. Do I hear a motion on the completeness of this application? Great. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Okay, Mrs. Rand, uh, seconds. <clears throat> Any discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Okay, unanimous again. Okay. Now for the site plan approval. Any questions in regard to that? You know what our engineer said, uh, without some demonstration that there's adequate parking, that, that we can do it. And, and we, we have, with all these respects to you, your opinion, and we've got our engineer's rather harsh letter, which talks about the question of geometrics of that egress and exit of four, uh, unlike with all the spaces the last thing you used. Um, I guess I would need uh, to be satisfied that we did in fact have 12 spaces. Now maybe what that means is we need further elaboration from the town engineer uh, so that we can make an informed judgment. Uh, and he hasn't exactly explained what he means. Uh, one more option is to see if we can get him to, to give us enough so that we can make a judgment as to whether or not I, I wonder if, uh, following up on Mr. Moore's point, if uh, if it were delineated by signs, signs might indicate small cars. If Mr. Hunter would would be agreeable to that kind of a an arrangement, is that a? Thank you, Steve, do you have a comment on what he means by geometrics of egress and exit? He says no. no. Are you, are you addressing that to Steve Butler? No, no. <laughs> so many Steve. I believe here this is based on recall of a conversation that I had with Bob Hunter specifically about the geometry of the lot. He was talking about that bump that exists around that existing tree where we've tried to save that. He's referencing that, at least in the conversation that I had with Bob relative to this, the geometry of accessing that space right there and the fact that the angle coming up the driveway and turning to enter into that space would make it difficult to negotiate with a full-size vehicle. His letter is a lot broader than that. It says the geometrics of the 
egress and exit. I think he was referring to one space. I believe, at least that was the result of the conversation I had. I think if the board has reservations about that, I believe I'm comfortable enough that I can sit down with Bob Hunter and look at the plan and try and work out a layout that Bob and I are in accord with. And if we can't, then maybe we have to come back before the board and present a different plan. If the board has reservations. I think the other item is that the three lots really on the side of the driveway leading up, if you assume that people as they're entering are going to then use those spaces pointing in a west, I think a westerly direction or northerly direction, then once they pulled out, they would probably have to somehow go up into the parking area and somehow turn around. Either that or they'd have to have a very tight turning radius in their car to swing around. So that may be another issue. It's probably something that we want to see, might want to see if something could be worked out and either have that done by staff or have it come back to the board either way. I guess I would feel that it would be appropriate for the applicant to discuss this with Bob Hunter to see if there is some way that 12, a mixed bag of 12 compact and large cars could be accommodated and so that it isn't as restrictive as it seems to be on our plan right now. So that I would feel that we could make this a conditional. Site plan approval. I think before we heard about the change tonight, they were really looking at a requirement of 11 spaces and then they had one extra. And that, I mean, I think from my perspective, I felt more comfortable with that because it might be tight, but if certain things could be done to mark the spaces, they at least had that one extra. And if one was unusable, they'd be okay. Now, with the requirement of being 12, I think it makes sense to have a town engineer look at that. So you would have a fourth condition. D. If you're going to do that, you have to give the engineer a standard. I'm very reluctant to say something to the engineer. The standard is a certificate by the engineer, an agreement by the engineer that egress and ingress is safe and that circulation and parking is adequate to present as much safety as is. If that was the standard, I wouldn't have a problem. I just don't think we need to lose. Right. Okay. Give that. Give that. Can you repeat some of that again so I can get the flavor? He said ingress and egress is safe. That was the first thing. There appear to be two different points. One is the ingress and egress and the other the circulation inside to get rid of the getting dressed in the closet syndrome in the parking lot. Right. So it would be the ingress and egress is safe and the parking. I guess we're talking about finding the engineer. Yeah. Madam Chairman? Yes. Is there still any question on the title to the driveway entrance itself? Is that still a question or has that been settled? I may be going back a long way in history, but is there a problem with the property adjacent allowing the use of that driveway? It seems like there was at the very beginning. Has that been settled? The driveway is no longer located on the adjacent property. It's located entirely on Mr. Gaynor's land. We'll give Steve a few minutes to compose this ordinance. Are there any other questions while he is composing the condition? Okay, then we'll take a few minutes here and wait.
Okay, I think Steve is ready. Okay, if, if, if the um, planning board agrees with the other items, I'll read the suggested motion as it's now going to be revised here. Be it ordered that the request of William Gaynor for site plan approval to convert an existing structure located at 1235 Shore Road from a residential use to three professional office units is granted according to section 19-2-9 of the zoning ordinance and the facts presented subject to the following conditions. A, that a new site plan approval shall be required if the present or future owner paves a driveway or parking area. B, that a driveway entrance permit be acquired by the applicant prior to the issuance of an occupancy permit for any of the, or for occupancy permits for any of the three units. <coughs> C, that the proposed method for indicating the location of each individual parking space shall be submitted for review and approval by the town engineer and the town planner and that such approved method shall be completed prior to the issuance of an occupancy permit. And D, that a revised parking lot design that increases the safety and usability of the parking lot and driveway shall be submitted to the town engineer and town planner for review and approval prior to the issuance of an occupancy permit. Thank you, Steve. Does that uh, language meet with the approval of the board? So move this, Rand. Can we do that one? Mm-hmm. You can. So is there a second? This is Rand. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, against? Nay. Okay, unanimous again. Well, thank you very much. You. I hope that you can meet with meet these conditions and I certainly wish all of you luck. Good luck. It's a beautiful building. Okay. Next on the agenda running uh, a little bit late. Uh, we have received a letter from the uh, applicants from the Highlands at Broad Cove, an 11 lot subdivision. And this is a pre-application conference. Is there anyone from the Broad Cove subdivision here? Good evening again. Good evening. Uh, for the record, my name is Stephen Moore. I am here with Peter Kennedy, who is the representative of the developer who is uh, working on this project. We are back again on this project. It's a project that I think we've been seeing for, I guess, uh, about six years before the board in various stages. And to refresh the board's memory, we were back before you a short while ago to discuss an 11-lot subdivision and looked at the alternative means of access and egress into the site and came away from that meeting with, if I can at least use my words to discuss it, a, um, an endorsement of the board of the concept of the lower density and the use of conservation easements and gifts to either the land trust or the town with some of the property within the parcel. There were two issues that were up in the air at the time that the board wanted some additional input on. And those two issues are things which we'd like to discuss with the board this evening and hopefully get some feedback from you before we go ahead and produce our preliminary plans. What we'd like to do is discuss the two issues of first the on-site use of wells and not the water distribution system by extension of the Portland Water District system. 
And number two, the issue which all of you, I'm sure, are well versed on now, given Mr. McGovern's memo of emergency access into the site. The request of the developer this evening is that we look at a second means of access being a permanent road out to Two Lights Road, and that it be located as was designed on the original sketch plan for an emergency only crash gate, but that where it enters onto Two Lights Road, that it be located such that we do not have to ro relocate the existing house and barn. You recall that at some of the earlier stages of the design, the road layout contemplated tearing down the existing barn and putting the new access road through that barn. The reason for that was the inability of the frontage of that particular lot to house both the 50-foot right-of-way and the existing structure in its present location and not have the house in violation of setback ordinances of the town. What we're looking at now is to try and leave the existing structure where it is. That building has been looked at by a couple of individuals who are experienced in moving structures and they have extreme reservations given the age and condition of the foundation in the house as to whether or not that structure can really be relocated and not actually create uh, some structural problems and unsafe conditions in that house once it's relocated. Are you talking the house and the barn? House and the barn. Uh, Peter has had discussions with them and if you want some further facts and details on that, Peter can discuss those. What we're looking at this evening is a proposal to create that road as a permanent access out to two lights. That would be a town standard road within a 50 foot right away that would meet the memo that's put forth by Mr. McGovern. But one of the questions we have for the board is we do not want to move that existing structure and we'd be looking at a process whereby we would have to go before a zoning board of appeals to discuss the need for a variance and we'd like board input and comment on that, hopefully in support of that, recognizing that the board has been very active in pushing for the second means of access and egress. The second issue was one which the chair raised specifically at the last meeting, which was some confusion over the plan showing on-site wells and then the cover letter indicating that it was proposed to extend the water main out to serve the project. Based on the lower density, it is economically infeasible to extend that water line and provide um, municipal water, public water to the lots. Did you say it wasn't or it was? It was not. It, it was, not. was not. What we propose to do is actually tap wells on each of the lots, and then each lot would have its own subsurface disposal and well on site, and we would not extend municipal water out in that area. And so, given those conditions, we would expect that at a time of preliminary submission, we would prepare a geotechnical study which would investigate the probable effects of wells and septic on each lot and have that presented at the time of the preliminary package. And that would be our proposal to you this evening. And then we'd like comment as to the board's feelings about the construction of a permanent road with the house being left where it is. Obviously, our position on that permanent road is if we had our choice, we would still like to see that be an emergency-only um, paved road that did not have to sit within a full 50-foot right-of-way. We believe that's consistent with what the neighborhood wants, but in <coughs> light of the strength of Mr. McGovern's memo, uh, we feel we don't have a whole lot of choice because we're really between a couple of rocks and a couple of hard places because the board has been quite insistent that there be a second means of access into this Broad Cove subdivision. <clears throat> Since we're the only active agents in that subdivision, the burden falls on us to, to solve that based on what the board has been indicating as the groundwork for coming in. And we're willing to do that, but we need to have some give and take from the board and the town, and we'd like to discuss that issue of the variance, I realize that's outside of this board's direct it purview. It is. But board comment relative to the historic nature and the visual importance of that structure has been guiding us. And I think 
dialogue like that can be very helpful when going before Zoning Board of Appeals. And with that as a somewhat informal and casual introduction, I turn it back to the board, recognizing that the best that we can hope for is enough comment that we can go off and prepare preliminary plans. We've been walking this project along for a number of months now, I think uh, 15 or 16, Peter, something like that. And uh, Peter's ready to move it forward, and we'd like to get the preliminary plans in as well done and <coughs> tight a fashion as they can be before coming back. So with that, Thank you. turn it back to the board. Well, I think that this might have been the fourth pre-application conference we have had. With Mr. Kennedy as the developer, yes. I think we've had a total of seven <laughs> pre-application pre conferences. So maybe seven. In the history of the project. But did you, uh, did you ever look at the ordinances relating to pre-application uh, processes? Yes. Section 16-2-2 states, prior to submitting a subdivision review application, the applicant shall meet with the planning board at least once, it says, not seven times, to discuss the proposal generally, acquaint the board with the nature of the proposal and the location, topography, and other attributes of its site, and obtain preliminary classification of the proposal as either a minor or major subdivision. I think that we can obtain a preliminary classification of the proposal. This, is a, this would be a major subdivision. But you have gotten away from the general aspects of what we're supposed to be doing here. And you've gotten into some very specific things like wells. That, that, that's a standout. And the road. And all I can say to you at this point, these are just a very few aspects of what this planning board has to look at. It's very premature of you to ask us about the wells and the road at, at this point in time because we have to look at the entire plan. We have to go to the land. We have to hear from our scientists and staff members and people from the community about all of these issues. And so how can we say anything now that, that would even be meaningful? I, I don't know what the rest of you feel. I'm very happy to hear about your plan, but to get into specifics of roads and uh, whether it's going to be a private road, a major road, a through road, um, at this particular point is extraordinarily premature. Yeah, I, I and I wouldn't want to get into it. Madam Chairman, I second sure. what you're saying. I, I really think that if you want to move this project along, what you really have to do is uh, commit yourself to some plans, get them in front of us, make sure that the application is complete, let us schedule a site walk, and get into the process. Um, it's, great, it's great to get feedback from the, from the planning board, but I think at this point in time, we're looking for some plans to chew on, and uh, I think you're going to have to pick it one way or the other and do it. That's right. The burden of proof is always on the applicant, and what we have here before us, I mean, letters are beginning to roll in pro and uh, cons, and what, what we have before us, ladies and gentlemen who are sitting here now, is merely the potential for a development and merely the potential for a road. And there are many, many things that have to be studied before this is a, a reality. We're dealing with phantoms. So you bring in the plans. We'll go and look at the land. We'll look at the plans, but as a whole, OK? as a whole thing because we cannot we cannot critique a book on the basis of three chapters or two chapters we've got to see all the chapters so i hope i hope you understand where i'm coming from i don't know where the rest of you are i from. i endorse what you say also mary and i think that our traditional procedure has been to be able to look at plans, you've got to give it your best shot as to what you think is the best plan for this property. 
and then we uh, can move along on a process. But until we have a plan, I know, and I appreciate what you're trying to do, you're perhaps trying to get a determination from the board prior to putting in a road, uh, but we, we can't function that way. A lot of material has got to come out on a, about a road in a public hearing, and that's the forum that we use. Uh, so I, I agree that we can't take any uh, really action tonight or do any discussion. Well, We've I got nothing we can, to discuss. It, it seems to me that, uh, that as long as it's understood and as long as we don't spend a lot of time, uh, uh, get the input or the output based upon the input and obviously there isn't anything here. Um, there may have been some misunderstanding. I have no problem um, reacting to the farmhouse issue, which I think is very positive, uh, and saying that I, I would endorse any efforts to save that. As the planning board member and the comprehensive planning commission, that's exactly what we're trying to do is preserve some of those things. Um, so if you want a reaction, my reaction is that uh, uh, you know, as a board member, I certainly would uh, uh, would favor that and any efforts to do that. And, uh, with respect to the wells, I leaned over and asked uh, uh, Jerry, who's our uh, our expert on the ordinances, whether that's okay. And he said, as long as there's potable water, it's okay. Uh, and I guess what, what he's saying is that uh, you'd have to demonstrate us that there's potable water. Uh, I also have no problem saying that uh, my view as a resident of that area and having talked to a lot of people is that uh, uh, is that we certainly don't look very hard at, uh, at avoiding a full-time road there. Uh, those are reactions that I'm perfectly prepared to give, obviously, as the rest of the planning board said, until we then see the plans and how you propose to do it, you can't get much more than that, but, but I'm not uncomfortable giving that personal reaction. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Mr. Fox. Anything else? Well, if not, we'll, we thank you, and I guess we will see you sometime in the very near future with your preliminary plan. Great. Thank you very much. Bye. No. Is there someone? Uh, yes, Louise, you have a question? Well, the, uh, you will, uh, anyone who isn't a budget, when these uh, applicants get their plans together, they will make an appointment and come before the planning board. And uh, all abutters will, will be uh, informed that these uh, applicants are before the planning board. And then there will be public hearings. Um, depending on how it goes, Forward, there might be several public hearings if extra, um, uh, what would be, if there are extra changes. And so, uh, at any rate, you will have ample time. Mm -hmm. There's no sense in inviting all of you to speak tonight, since really there is nothing to discuss. But I thank you for your interest and for coming. And. Uh, Stay on top of it. <laughs> Keep the faith. <laughs> Thank you all. Okay, next on the agenda, we're just about going to make it. Uh, Hidden Court, the four lot minor subdivision. Um, they'd like to have an amendment to a previously approved subdivision plan. Good evening. How are you? Nice to see yes. you again. I'll, I'll try to be brief with respect to the clock. Thank you for being here. My name is Sarah Marshall. I'm here to represent the applicants 
robert and kimberly davis in their application for amendments to a previously approved minor subdivision plan known as hidden court i'm sure most of you remember it it was not so long ago the subdivision received final approval on january seventeenth of this year since that approval the subdivision plan was properly recorded in the cumberland county registry of deeds and the two ten acre lots which we created have been sold to the uh... coggeshall and hamlet families of cape elizabeth also since that time these uh... the owners of these three lots have determined that there were minor changes that they would like to make to the plan the changes have been very very seriously and carefully considered and they are shown on the drawings which you have and which i have here too it's the exact same drawing i wanted you to have the highlighted drawing so you could see exactly what we're doing the changes are these between lots one and two you can see the yellow line shows our proposed line the blue is what was formally approved the change on this in this area is intended to give the owners of the field lot a more complete share of the legally restricted buildable zone the uh... lot area of ten acres has been maintained by a commensurate reduction on the back side the revised lot line between lots one and three has been redrawn in response to the wishes of the davises to own the stone gates located on the plan and the response of the hamlets buyers of this lot to have a share of the formal lawn which is the foreground to their view and these things have been uh... carefully discussed and agreed upon and i have letters to that uh... effect between the owners of these uh... neighboring lots the field work and calculations for this uh... work has been done by owen haskell associates the drawing is signed and sealed by john swan the lot corners have been located with iron pins we think we've got all our t's crossed and i's dotted and as i said the lot line revisions will maintain both of these lots at exactly ten acres i guess i'd just like to keep this brief and just in closing emphasize that all of these revisions are of a strictly internal nature and that uh... all of our previously approved uh... driveway locations maintenance agreements conservation agreements everything is unchanged that we have uh... all the same uh... intents to preserve the land in its in its state while these uh... ownership and technical type revisions uh... seem you know a little fussy because they're not going to alter the face of the land they're not going to change where someone's going to build their house you won't see these differences but uh... they're very important to these parties that's the their mutual feeling that these revisions will enhance their property values and their and their lifestyle by just owning what they see and owning what they need around their house thank you i guess that's it well thank you are there any questions or comments from the planning board on this steve do you have anything one comment and that's something that uh... sarah and i talked about just today and that is that technically speaking now that the hamlets and the cogshalls own property that the parties requesting the amendment really should be all the owners mm -hmm. and therefore um, i'm assuming that the davises don't have a problem with that and that the property owners don't have a problem either and they agree to it so i'd ask mm -hmm. um, sarah to submit either have them the owners in person or through writing submit materials that would show that they indeed agreed with all these right. items good to make point. sure it's legal yes. exhibit a and b that. here yeah when I read this, and that is an excellent point. Yeah. Great. Any other comments? Questions? I'll make a motion that we uh, approve the request of the Davises, Cogshalls, and Hamlets for the amendment to the subdivision plan as uh, shown to us tonight. Mm hmm. I'll second it. Any discussion? Was that the ordinance? And then here are the specifics. Did you specifically cite a section, Dan? Or a there no. is a section for. I yeah. can say according to section 6 2 5. Yes. 16 yes. 2 5. Yeah. 
and the facts presented, okay? As long as we know what, what ordinance we are moving and seconding. Second in, second, I can't say that. Okay. Um, any other comments, questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous again. Good this night. board is becoming more and more unanimous. Yes, you're, you're awfully nice. Yeah, I think you need, you need this Thank summary. You. Yes. Well, good luck with it again. It is the most beautiful piece of property I think I've ever seen. signing this, I think, so that we can um, go home at an early hour. Um, Mike McGovern has informed me that there is money in the budget, in the town budget, for um, planning board members to attend meetings. So if any of you are interested in going to a, a planning meeting, like uh, there is a COG meeting, which I cannot attend, the, uh, what is it? Convention, right. Um, he assured me that there is money there, and if you want to go um, and avail yourself yourselves of these things, the town will pay for that. I'd like to announce that on July 11th at 7 p.m., we will have a workshop on the of the very important wetlands ordinance that Alice started last year, and um, I. I we have just got to complete that. And so let me know if you can't come so that we can reschedule that. What, what date is that? That's July 11th at 7 p.m. Um, Would that be something I should also attend? Yes, if you could. Um, also, uh, I have been informed by Ernie McVeigh that. Um, Little violations of conditions are sometimes occurring um, in Cape Elizabeth, and I would like to um, address that at, at that um, workshop meeting. I also received many, many calls last week about numerous alleged, I should say, alleged uh, violations of DEP conditions, um, people who called who wondered if trees had been cut down, which might be in the town right of way. So I think that we have a lot of things to uh, discuss at the, our next workshop meeting. I hope we can get them all done. And I thank all of you for coming tonight. Ma Marion, I can't be there on the 11th. On that 11th? Um, I'm just going to be on vacation. Well, that's wonderful. I hope you have a good time. <laughs> But uh, if the rest of you cannot come on the 11th, would you tell me so that we can um, plan to do this another time? Because this is one of the most important things we're doing this year. Anything else to be brought before the planning board? Motion if not, I hear a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.
Thank you all very, very much for coming.